So we're going to go over tourniquet use today. We're going to cover two different tourniquets. That first one's going to be the cat tourniquet from North American Rescue, and the second is going to be the soft T wide from Tactical Medical Solutions. These two tourniquets are both COTC approved. That's the Committee on Tactical Combat Casualty Care. There's a third COTC approved tourniquet out on the market right now. That's the Emergency Military Tourniquet from Delphi. It operates a little bit differently from these two. These are both strap and rod or strap and windlass type tourniquets, whereas the other is pneumatic. And there's a fourth tourniquet that's being evaluated right now that pot could potentially be added to that list of approved tourniquets soon. So the first one that we're gonna go over today is the CAT tourniquet. We're gonna go over a couple differences between the Gen 7, which you see here, and the Gen 6, which is the prior version, and also counterfeit tourniquets, which we get asked about a lot in classes. So the first thing that you'll see here, which kind of helps you identify this between the Gen 6, is the windlass. You'll see some ridges here on the windlass, and these, these ridges come out from the windlass rod versus the Gen 6, where they were indentations into the windlass rod, and the rod itself has been beefed up a little bit. So that's one of the first things that you can notice even before it's out of the packaging. So the strap itself was lengthened a little bit in the Gen 7. It's still this self-adhering band that goes around the circumference of the extremity. And then you've got the red tip on the end, and that red tip has a little bit of support in, internally into it. So that way you can kind of get a little bit better grip on that, that section there. And then the buckle is the other major difference here. As you can see, this buckle has a single routing option. When we take a look at the interior portion of it, there are some teeth in there that you can see, and those teeth provide a little bit of friction. On the Gen 6 version, there were two different places you could route this strap through the buckle, and then there were teeth on the internal side of each one of those slots, but then you had to make sure you picked the correct slot in order to get the friction use out of that. The other final difference that we'll see is we have the strap, the rod, windlass, the windlass clip, and then the windlass securing strap. That windlass securing strap in the Gen 7 is gray. In the Gen 6, it was white. This was a little bit more tactical, we'll say. So, one of the things that we'll see with the, the fake or counterfeit tourniquets, which is important to cover real quick, is when you flip over this tourniquet, you'll see along the edges here, and then even on the tip end here, you'll see there are some radio frequency welds that are here along the edges of the tourniquet, and that kind of holds this thing secure. On the counterfeit versions, if you flip it over onto the back, the first thing that you'll see is the RFID welds are about two to three inches down into the band. Now, when we take a look at how this is, is designed, there's an internal strap that runs through the strap itself. When we wrap this around a patient's extremity and we start to tighten the windlass, we're tightening this internal band. So on the counterfeit tourniquets, that band only comes to about two to three inches past the section here where the rod of windlass is. So as I'm tightening, I'm not tightening circumferentially. I'm tightening just this two or three inches. So that's been a failure point in those fake tourniquets and that it'll break off internally here. And then now this thing is completely worthless. The other thing that you'll notice on the back, and it's a little bit difficult to see here on the video because it's all just raised lettering, but you'll see cat written real wide. You'll see some manufacturing information here, and then you've got a website there. This is a website from the manufacturer. If you want to purchase this, you can go to our website, www.soulrescue.com, or you can go to the manufacturer's website. That's narescue.com as well. So we'll talk about how we use this in a minute. We'll do some live demonstration. The second tourniquet, soft T wide. A couple differences between this one and the cat tourniquet is there's no self-adhering band. This is just a nylon strap that goes around the patient's extremity, and then it goes through a buckle here. It's already routed. There's no friction teeth as it's already pre-routed, and then it's got that, that edge is sewn so that it stops if it's pulled all the way through or attempted to. So you have a buckle that can disconnect. That can go underneath the patient's extremity if they're lying on the ground, and then it comes back through and disconnects back in. We've also got a little section here on the end of the strap where you can write the time of application down. Other than that, it's pretty much the same style use, although there's no internal band. When we tighten this windlass down, we're tightening this band as it comes to this nylon section. In order to secure the windlass, we'll put it here in a kind of in line with the remainder of the tourniquet, and then this triangular clip will come over top, and there's a notch where that'll go into the, into the windlass. So again, a couple differences with this and the prior generation for the soft T wide. 
the buckle here was flat on the prior version. Um, other than that, the construction is pretty much the same. So again, here we'll go over instructions for use on that one in just a minute as well. Now we're gonna demonstrate how the tourniquet's used. We've got the cat tourniquet here today. We're gonna to first slide this on over the extremity. The next thing we're gonna do is tighten down the Velcro as far as we can get it. The more tightness, the, the more slack we can take out of the band here at this point, the less turns we have to utilize with the windlass. Next, we're gonna turn the windlass until it's tight. And then once we've gotten it tight, we're gonna secure it in this windlass clip and then take that windlass securing band and bring it across the top. If we have any extra slack, we have any extra tail on our strap, we can bring that through that windlass clip and we can secure that with the rest of the windlass as well. So the soft T-wide works in very similar fashion. We're gonna slide it up over the arm, over the extremity, and then we're gonna tighten down as much of this band as we can. Once we've tightened that band down, then we'll start to tighten the windlass. Once we've tightened the windlass down, we'll secure it with this clip into the notch on the windlass, and then we're done. What we're gonna do for either device to check to make sure that the, the tourniquet is secured the hemorrhage or the tourniquet's done its job, is we'll check to see that the bleeding is stopped, or we'll check a radio pulse or a pulse at the distal end of the extremity and make sure that the pulse is stopped. So we'll show a couple tips on packaging. When it comes out of the packaging, the cat is going to be set up like this. You're going to have about six to eight inches there that are kind of connected and covered. And then you'll have it doubled over like so. So when it comes out of the packaging, this is kind of going to be how it's set up. One of the things you want to do, make sure you take it out of the packaging. If you've got gloved hands that are covered in some type of blood, water, rain, whatever, Give yourself a little bit of advantage, take it out of the packaging. So one of the things that you'll notice when you take it out of the packaging, please do not, do not put this clip in, put, put the tourniquet in the clip like so, or we even see people will put the strap across to keep the tourniquet secure as they put it in their kit. When I go to use this thing, my issue is gonna be, now I cannot tighten this windlass because it's strapped into the clip. Don't do that. That's gonna be a failure point when you're stressed. The other thing that we'll see here, for some reason people just decide that it needs to go ahead and go over so that way the, that extra tab on the windlass, or the, on the windlass securing uh, strap there doesn't get caught on something. So again, leave that channel open because when I'm in, during stress, the last thing that I want to do is make life difficult on myself. So make sure that it's always kept open like that. There, there is another school of thought on how the band itself should be packaged, right? There are some people that enjoy keeping it like this because it keeps it pretty compact and it keeps it in your kit from coming undone or fumbling around, falling around. When you go to use this, if you give it a hard tug, it's gonna come loose. And that's one of the things that it is required for the COTC approved tourniquets is that they must be able to be used with only one hand that's so that it can be self-applied. So. The second style, which some folks like to put this tourniquet in their kit, is they'll take this band and they'll fold it over to give themselves a little bit more grip on that. Now you've just hidden that red tab section, so if this is something that you wanna do, make sure you just practice with it. Make sure you get comfortable with how it's used. The second thing that folks will do is instead of putting that self-adhering strap to the self-adhering strap, like so, they'll kind of take it in the opposite direction. And so that puts the, the slick back of the nylon against that self-adhering band. So when I pull it out of my kit, I don't need to do anything. It's gonna automatically come open. That's just one way that folks like to secure things in their kit. Again, it's gonna be up to personal preference, just whichever way you choose, make sure you practice and train with it. This is a worthless tool if you don't practice and train. 
That's going to be the, the number one thing under stress that you want to be able to do correctly the first time. Because if we remember our TCCC or tech teaching, patient can bleed out in three minutes. We want to make sure these things are set up and we've practiced them. So the next thing that we'll look at is how to pack the soft tea wide. This is how it comes right out of the plastic. You can see it's a little bit wide and bulky. That windlass itself sticks out past the top end of the nylon. We'll take a little bit closer view of that, how it looks. Right, you can see how a little bit bulky. Again, personal preference. This might be how you want to put it in your kit. Depends on what your kit looks like. Depends on what your cube setup is. You got two rubber bands here that kind of hold everything together so that it's nice and snug because there's no self-adhering band for it to take care of itself. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these two rubber bands and we're gonna use those to now what we call flat pack this tourniquet. This is a pretty popular method to take this tourniquet and make it a little bit lower cube size. So a couple things that we're gonna do to get this thing ready is we're gonna take the band and pull a little bit of slack out. Our eventual goal is that we're gonna to wanna to have it sitting, the windlass sitting right next to that nylon section, nice and tidy. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to the strap and we're gonna shorten the tail up some, that way we don't have so much of it hanging out. We're gonna take this nylon section and bend the tourniquet right there at that buckle. It's a little bit difficult to see, but we're gonna take it and it's bent right there at the buckle. And then we take the remainder of the strap, and we'll just kind of tri-fold it up into the tourniquet itself. We'll take two rubber bands that came with it these are two different rubber bands just so you can see where they're placed. And we'll secure those rubber bands back onto the tourniquet itself. Once we've done that, now it's a little bit lower profile, a little bit lower cube size, and it might fit into different uh, pockets and spots that we want to put it into a little bit better. As you take a look at it from above, it's a little bit different width-wise. You can see the difference between the two, pretty significant. Ultimately, it doesn't sit a whole lot wider than the windlass itself. Now we've got the windlass to the side. It is a little bit thicker in this direction, though, so again, it depends on how your kit's set up and which one you'd like to do.